murder is the word I hear when the whisper finally hits my ear. I got a soul trapped in my chest, and long fast, so I start stepping to the voice, get put to rest. Every night it comes back at three in the morning, moaning, telling me to kill motherfuckers, lay down my opponents, pop pills, and stay on that coping. Late night when I ride so hot. How did I get into music? Well, uh, I started music very young. Um, I think I was about eight years old. I started playing drums. Um, I used to bug the fuck out of my mom. Um, I used to stack buckets and like pots and pans and shit. And uh, I would grab like the wooden spoons and I would actually, uh, I would mimic drums uh, to the Appetite of Destruction album from Guns N' Roses. And I do that in my front yard in my apartment building. And uh, I would blast the music and I would pretty much be playing the drums on these buckets and these pans. Um, I started to learn the tones of the different pans and shit. So um, I would actually play them like a real drum set. Um, and then I graduated to cello. And then I started playing violin. I started playing uh, some piano. And as I got older, I just kind of progressed to different instruments. Uh, I played uh, stand-up bass. I played electric bass. I played electric guitar. Um, I'm not good no more, but yeah. So that's where I started at, um, and uh, yeah. So I started rapping in about 2000, and uh, back then I really didn't know what bars were. Um, I used to write, and I used to write and write and write and write and write and write and write. Um, and my homie one day was like, yo man, you need to put those into bars. I was like, what the fuck's a bar? You know what I mean? And uh, so he taught me how to do it. Eventually, I started writing songs, I found a producer, and I started doing demos. Well then, uh, at this time I had met Zodiac Killa. He was the OG member, and he's the OG owner of fucking SKR. And uh, yeah, so he uh, heard about me through a couple mutual friends, and he said that he was starting a label and that he wanted me to be a part of that as the first artist signed. And I was like, fuck yeah, man, like I'm with it. Nobody has really reached out to me like that. So yeah, I'm way down. So we started doing all that shit. Um, and yeah, I guess that's really where my music career started was back then. It was about 2000, 2001. And uh, we grew pretty close, man. Like we were best friends for a long time and shit. And, uh, and we did music together. Pretty much when we hung out, it was just straight music. That's all we did. We used to spend hours at Kinko's, like hours and hours and hours. Um, I used to go to work at six in the morning. I would get off work at nine o'clock at night, like a fucking 14 hour shift. And then I would go meet uh, Sick and Zodiac at Kinko's and we'd stay there till four in the morning, just fucking printing out flyers, printing out posters. And then we'd go and we'd plaster them around on the local churches. <laughs> trying to get negative uh, publicity and all that. And yeah, um, so that's kind of where my career started as far as rap. And rap is a uh, state of horrorcore right now. In my eyes, is uh, I think it's falling off. I think it's dying off. This music is for these kids that don't fit in anywhere and they need a place to fit in. And you have artists like myself and Scum and you know, like Fiasco and uh, stuff like that. Uh, who else? Uh, fucking Comatose, fucking Bloodshot, Bill Nickel, all my homies, you know what I mean? We make this music for kids that want to fit into a crowd that have never fit into anything. And uh, I don't think that fucking horrorcore is really probably going to be like on a mainstream level, but I think it can be something big or I guess bigger than what it is now. As far as the artists and the quality that's coming out right now, it's, uh, I don't know, man. It's really, it's hard for me to say because I really don't listen to rap no more. I, uh, I listen to rock and roll, I listen to heavy metal, motionless and white, shit like that. You know what I mean, Slipknot, fucking, there's a number of bands that I listen to, but um, as far as rap, I really don't listen to any rap. And um, 
for me to give you a really good description on the horror course scene right now, I see a lot of businesses thriving, but I see a lot of upcoming artists that aren't taking the steps that they need to. If they just had a push, they could be something great. And I feel like that's how I am. If some of these artists would help me and if they would push me out, I'd be able to help them out and we could do some networking or whatever, you know what I mean? But that's not the way the game is right now. The game ain't the way that it was back in 2008, 2009. A, a lot of shit's changed. I've been out the game for a while, so now I'm trying to get back in and I'm back down here when I used to be right here and now my goal is to be up here while they're still down here so I mean the state of horrorcore is just man it's a it's a tough topic for me um I love fucking hip-hop I love the underground hip-hop sorry excuse me underground hip-hop um hardcore rap you know that shit so I think it all kind of combines into one thing I left rap um, because I was pretty much a full-fledged fucking drug addict, to be completely brutally honest. Um, I started uh, taking painkillers. I uh, had a back injury, and uh, of course, I mean, that's the way it starts. Um, and I started taking painkillers. Um, eventually, it just started getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And by my third OD, um, I fucking opened my eyes and I was like, fuck, um, I need to fucking do something. So uh, I quit music, I left Colorado, I went back home with my parents, they put me in rehab, I was in rehab for a year, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much why I had to quit music. And it wasn't because I wanted to, it's because I had to. If I didn't quit music and pretty much go to this rehab, I'd be fucking dead right now, and that's for real, for real. Um, I was scared, man, I was really scared. Um, on my last OD, I was in the ambulance, but I was watching everything happening from above, flying above the fucking ambulance, and I was looking down at myself, and you know the fucking, like, clear things. <sighs> um, they did it three times, and on the first time, I like flew into my body, then flew back up. Second time, happened again. Third time, boom, right back into my body, and I just remember waking up like, <gasps> like that, and I opened my eyes. I was like, fuck. I looked around, and I saw my grandma, because I OD'd at my grandma's house, and that's really fucked up for me to do to her. Uh, she helped me through everything. She gave me a place to live when I was fucking homeless, and uh, yeah. So I pretty much lost everything. I was a fucking drug addict. Um, and yeah, I just had to quit. And um, I feel that now is the time for me to come back out because uh, I'm just ready for it. And um, it might have taken me a long time, but uh, they say don't do anything until you want to put 100 into it. And right now in my life, I feel like I'm ready to do it. So. Yeah, I mean, that's why I fucking quit music, and that's why I'm coming back. I picked the horrorcore scene because when I was little, my parents wouldn't let me watch horror films. And I always wondered why, and they would never tell me. So when I got a little older, I started watching them, and for some reason, I guess just because my parents said that it was bad, I uh, wanted to do it more, you know, like a bad kid. You can't do that? Well, I'm going to go do it anyways. So that's what happened. And uh, my mom, she's very, very fucking religious, and uh, she tried to have me be like that my whole life. And when I turned 16, I just kind of went my own way, and that's when I started rapping. So. Um, all this new shit started coming to me. I found out that there's other people like me um, who enjoyed the fucking same shit. I started listening to Psychopathic Records. They were like horror movies. 
And yeah, so I just kind of wanted to stick with the shit. And um, when I got signed to SKR, it was like, dang man, there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of people like me. And uh, yeah, and I felt the love. Um, of course, we were all juggalos at the time, you know. And um, it was just crazy, man. I just wanted to fucking like do something for kids that were like me. And horrorcore was such a tight knit circle and so close with their fans I was like fuck yeah that's the type of shit that I want to do and um yeah so I mean I'm doing it Forgive Me was an album that I actually came up with about a year ago um I was listening to Dark Half uh Graveyard Blues and the, uh they actually had a song called Forgive Me on their CD and um, when I heard that song, that's the song that made me want to start coming back into music. Um, I actually met Dark Half way back in the day, like 2008. Um, very fucking humble dudes and um, yeah, R.I.P. Gino. Um, just gotta show love, much love to my LSP brothers. You know I got your back for life. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. So I heard the Dark Half album, I heard the Forgive Me song, and I actually came up with a way to do an album. And um, this album was Forgive Me. Um, it's my take on what I thought Forgive Me meant. From my drug abuse to um, shit with friends, um, just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I also got a track on there about my little brother um, who passed away and my aunt and that it was kind of hard to record but I mean you know what I mean it's just it's music it's a way to forming uh, therapeutic thoughts into fucking musical form so that's what I did it's, uh, instead of dwelling on the song or sorry instead of dwelling on the pain I released it on music and uh, yeah so that's the forgive me album the Forgive Me album only features one artist, um, my boy Heaven and his homeboy, he did the hook. Um, the reason that I did that was because Heaven was the only, he was the only person, he was the only artist that kept telling me, do it man, do it man, do it man, do it man. We've been waiting for you to come back, we've been waiting for you to come back, blah 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 blah. So I was like, fuck it man. So my first, my first fucking album that I released is called Forgive Me, featuring Heaven. Um, and his boy, Naf, uh, much love to fucking both y'all, um, and fucking thank you for fucking believing in me, you know what I mean, um, yeah, so that's Forgive Me, it has seven tracks, uh, there's a kind of, there's a little bit of everything in there, so, um, you can download it at SoundCloud backslash Relic781. In five years, I probably see myself um, hopefully doing music. I want to be on tour. I want to be selling merchandise. I want to be fucking mingling with my fans. Um, yeah, man, I just want to be doing music full time. Um, I've had so many opportunities, and I know so many people that that shouldn't be a problem for me. But it really is, man. I mean, so many people just want to see you hustle by yourself and. They want to see you do it by yourself before they lend a hand out, and I understand that. It's um, it's a cruel thing in the game, but I mean, um, me, I have helped so many upcoming artists that when I look at these bigger artists and if they want to help me out, I know exactly what they're thinking. They want me to build myself up by myself and then. We can collab together, we can work together, we can do this, we can build a friendship, we can do all this shit. And um, I totally respect them for that. I mean, because if I was given a handout, then, I mean, where's the success in myself? And I got a brain, I'm fucking smart. I mean, I can do it myself. I just need to give myself that push. And um, yeah, so in five years, I see myself doing music uh, full time. I already took my break. I already fucked up. Now it's time to fucking really do this and really get it started. And um, 
yeah, I mean, there's no way but up. I've already hit rock bottom twice. Some artists that I want to work with, uh, let's see. Um, on a big level, of course Eminem. I mean, he's my favorite rapper. Hobson, Low Key, fucking Comatose, Bloodshot, Scum, Fiasco Andretti. I mean, me and Fiasco got the Buried Alive thing going on, but that's production. Um, Fiasco's actually one of my really good friends, man. He's probably like one of my best friends. But uh, he's been there for me ever since fucking day one. Since I moved to fucking Colorado and I tried to get my music start, Fiasco's been there. So, I mean, that dude, man, I got his back for life. Anything he needs, I got his back. Um, yeah, so, those artists. Um, I wouldn't mind doing a track with Stitches. I wouldn't mind doing a track with uh, the fucking Joker. That dude, fuck. He fucking demolishes bars like it's food. <laughs> He fucking destroys that shit. Um, his production's very good. Um, some other artists, fuck, I don't know, man. I guess like Corey Taylor, Tech 9 of course. I mean, they just did something together. That shit was ill as fuck. Much love to Tech, man. That dude's fucking, he came from the ground up and that shit went fucking hard. Um, who else, man? Fuck, there's so many people. I'd probably say, like on Down South shit, Lil Jon, of course. Who the fuck wouldn't want Lil Jon on their hook? That shit would be fucking ill. Um, fuck. Probably Kevin Gates. <laughs> that dude is fucking ill too, man. Um, Chris Motionless from Motionless and White. Uh, Ronnie Radke from Falling in Reverse. If I could have him sing on a hook, that'd be ill, man. That dude's been through a lot of fucking shit. Um, shit, man. Fucking Axl Rose. <laughs> That'd be bad. Um, shit, who else? Who else, man? Marilyn Manson? Of course. So, yeah, man, I mean, that's just a little bit, but I can't think of anything else. Um, I already named everybody. Um, Small's one, of course. I mean, me and her are doing some shit later this year. For closing and for shout outs, uh, First shout out uh, is fucking SK. They've been there for me since day one. Same with LSP. Much love to fucking both y'all. Um, fucking Cap. Comatose, Ill Nickel. Fucking Oogie Boogie. My boy Phoenix. Um, Void. What's up, dog? My homie Azriel. Um, we haven't chopped it up in a minute, but you know what's up. Um, Smalls one. I mean, fuck, man. I think I've known Smalls one for like 11 years or something, and we both came from the same place. A bloodshot. What's up, dog? Um, so many fucking people. Scum. Uh, my homeboy Childish from fucking BBK. Uh, v. What up, dog? Twist. Um, McFly from fucking LSP. What's up, dog? My homie Dwight. What's up, Joker? Um. And yeah, man, my homie Derek, Spooky, Mr. Spooky, you bastard, I gave you that name, you fucker. <laughs> um, my homeboy Buckshot, of course, my brother, my fucking, that's my soldier for life, man. I mean, me and him, we've been through this shit since I first started my fucking career as a full-time solo artist back in 2007. He was there with me. And, uh, yeah, man, so much love. Um, R.I.P. to fucking Gridlock from the Killer Crew. R.I.P. to fucking Gino from fucking LSP. Much love. Mr. Stitches. Um, shit, man, there's so many people. Chaos Creature. Much love, girl. Rest in peace. And, um, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to you. Whoever's watching this, I mean, fuck, man, thank you guys so much. I appreciate all the love. I fucking know I'm coming back out, but I'm coming back out swinging, and it's not gonna be the end of it. So, much love, y'all. Keep it fucking horror, keep it wicked underground. Yeah, I'm back on the grind. Been a minute since I rhymed. From the top to the bottom, now I'm sifting to the grind. These last five years been fucked up for me. Ain't no motherfuckers wanna work with me, huh? To tell the truth, I really lost all hope. I really never thought I would go grab my pencil. But as I watch my scene turn 
tuned to shit besides a few artists. I really quit listening. See any the underground put out, but now I feel it's my time to scream and shout. I let these motherfuckers know that I'm back in the game. And once I drop my album, guaranteed shit gon' change. I ain't the same as I used to be. If you don't wanna fuck with me, turn your goddamn cheek. You don't like the new shit, kiss my ass. I'm gonna do it how I wanna head it down a new path. Forever, but fuck that, I'm back I'm fucking stronger than ever I had to take a step back I'm clean, relapse Looking back, I wish I would've walked a different path I ain't letting you bitches get the best of me You motherfuckers think I'm playing and I'm blind to see What you saying, what you doing behind your screens I ain't got the time or the fucking energy So now it's brand new, 2015 Everything I'm doing is to feed my fucking family I cleanse myself with a little bit of green tree Inhale slow and let the spirit take over me I live my life a little bit on the dark side Kicking ass and taking names with the rhymes that I write So now you know how I live and how I ride 2015, I'm taking off, yo, I'm back on the grind Motherfuckers <laughs> You thought I was going out this motherfucker, didn't you? I know it fucking just burns your fucking blood, my name But, uh I'm here to tell you that I'm back on the grind And I ain't ever, ever going anywhere These motherfuckers hate me cause they know I'm back on the grind These motherfuckers hate me cause they know I'm back on the grind